Well, you know something, brother? Just because I eat non-dairy ice cream all day, you just can't have mashed potato muscles and be a cream puff, brother. You gotta get your ass down to the gym and do some hanging and banging. Big arms, big paychecks, brother. Hey, uh, is Hulk home? Babe, I think there's a fan out, Frank. It's probably a bill collector. What's up, guys? Whoa! We're here to see your gym and fridge. Well, get mine. Come on in. All right, Hulk, show us your fridge. Everything in here is organic. We've got the yogurts, we've got blueberries, we've got almond milk, protein to wash down vitamins. Back in the hardcore wrestling days, did people talk about protein as much as they did now? No, back in the hardcore wrestling days, people talked about the money and the miles and who could drink the most beer. And I mean, I would start out and I would eat 12 fried eggs in the morning, two hamburger patties, oatmeal, and everything would have butter on it because at the time, my engine was burning so fast, I was wrestling like 400 times a year. Driving, flying, minimal sleep, three, four hours a night, and this never stopped because it was just me for a long time and there was no John Cena or Rock or anybody else. So all I did was eat protein back then. Wow. Was it hard to maintain that type of diet? Um, no, it wasn't hard to maintain that type of diet because you can go in any Denny's or any IHOP and get that type of food. I wasn't aware I wasn't educated as far as quality of food and how much quantity I should eat. I was just hungry all the time. What did you eat before and after a match? The pre-match meal was probably three Miller Lights and two Tylenols. That was the pre-match meal. And then afterwards, the post-match meal was probably 12 Miller Lights. So that's how it was. Well, that doesn't sound healthy. Do you still drink Miller Lights? No, I don't. I don't drink alcohol at all. I just don't drink. Don't take Tylenols. I don't do anything except drink really good water. Mountain Valley water in glass bottles. When did you give up alcohol? Oh, about six months ago, completely. Wow, congrats, man. Why'd you do that? Just got tired of it. Um, it got to be a way to kind of numb me a little bit because I had a bunch of crazy business problems and personal stuff going on at the time. And I caught myself after I would train getting too aggressive once again with the alcohol and I just decided to stop it. I know you recently lost 40 pounds. What made you want to transform? About 15 years ago, my body kind of shut down on me. And I had several knee surgeries, several scope jobs on my knees. And, and then after wrestling so many years, after wrestling 40 years almost, my body shut down on me. I went in for one back surgery, was turned into 10 back surgeries. Both knees needed to be replaced. Both hips were replaced. A couple surgeries on my face from getting my orbital socket broken a couple times. And it ended up being like 25, 26 surgeries or a couple more over a 10 or 12 year period. So it changed the game on me. It made everything different for me. And I changed my whole lifestyle because at the time being in so much pain and getting older and older, I couldn't carry that much weight. And when you're sedentary and you're not moving and, and wrestling every night, it's easy to put weight on. So I decided to drop weight and get down to about 265. And actually the last time I weighed 265, I was in ninth grade. I, I feel great, you know, just uh, without all the other extra stuff, you actually feel alive because a little bit of pain makes you know you're alive. Spoken like a true champ. What wrestler, living or dead, would you most like to share a meal with? If I had to share a meal with any wrestler right now and spend time with one guy, it would be, oh yeah, the macho man Randy Savage, dig it. He was my guy. I would love to sit down with him and have a conversation. There's a lot of stuff that we fixed in, in the end of our relationship before he passed away, but I still would love to spend time with him and talk with him. Would you have a meal with Andre the Giant? Oh, please. Andre the Giant was my traveling companion for the last whew, 15 years, and we ate all the time together, but the 10 or 12 years before that, it was a rough go. So what meals do you have every day? Well, breakfast is a quick hit. So it's a cup of yogurts, a banana, coffee, of course, organic coffee. What about lunch? Um, yeah, we have lunch. I mean, we've got chicken, we've got steak, got raw tuna, sashimi, 
So there's nothing bad in here at all. What does dinner look like? Dinner usually consists of either steak or chicken or, or tuna. It's pretty much the same. And we have, of course, the organic cookies. When did you drop sugar? When I realized it caused a whole bunch of inflammation in my joints, sugar had to be eliminated immediately because I was trying to figure out why being completely healthy was much more important to me than, you know, making my body numb. We've heard that you fear no man, no beast, or evil. But is there any food you can't stand? Wow. The one food that I cannot stand is sea urchin. When I go to a Japanese restaurant, I can eat everything except sea urchin. The first time I ate it in Japan, it tasted like baby poop. You know, not that I know what baby poop tastes like, but I've, I know what it smells like from being around young kids and it tastes like that. How about cheat day? Yes, I do have a cheat day every once in a while. I had a cheat night last night at Hogan's Hangout. I actually ate french fries and dipped them in Thousand Island dressing. I woke up all swollen up this morning from the pump. Do you mind telling us what you do at Hogan's Hangout? No, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, when I go to Hogan's Hangout, it's karaoke night, and my son introduces me, I come in, and it's usually a bunch of screaming Hulkamaniacs, and, and then to get the party started, I say we respect all the old school wrestlers. And out of total respect for that no good rattlesnake, Stone Cold Steve Austin, if you want one free shot from Hogan's Hangout, give me a hell yeah! It makes the karaoke much livelier. Do you take any supplements? Do I take any supplements? No. I take no supplements at all. The only thing I have here is kryptonite and rocket fuel and jet fuel. And of course I take supplements. How about CBD? Well, when Rick and Mike came at me, they, when they come at you, they come at you wide open. I mean, full tilt boogie, no, no filters. So when I did my research, it was such a smart move compared to seeing all these, these athletes that live on Xanaxes and Halcyons and speed and, you know, pain pills. Been there, done that, okay, you know. It's not my first rodeo. I've been around the block a few times, tried a few different things, and this is something that's healthy and it works for me. Enough of the gaga, okay? You guys, cut to the chase, straight to the good stuff, brother. Oh, can't even open it. I've lost my power. Okay, vanilla sandwiches, almond milk, mocha chocolate fudge, almond milk. Caramel crusted non-dairy frozen dessert. You guys know what that is. Woo, bad to the bone. We've got plant-based. These things are bad to the bone too. Sea salt caramel swirls, brother. Woo, yeah. Mm. Well, you know something, brother. Just because I eat non-dairy ice cream all day, you just can't have mashed potato muscles and be a cream puff, brother. You gotta get your ass down to the gym and do some hanging and banging. Dumbbell curls, good looking girls like Sky Daily, big arms, big paychecks, brother. All right, Hulk, it's time to see your gym. What are your fitness goals now? My fitness goals now? Well, I'm gonna be 70 years old in August and my fitness goal is when I walk down the beach with my girl Sky and my shirt's off, <clears throat> I look better than the 30 or 35 year old guy that's walking down the beach like the cock at the walk. I wanna make sure that I look better than all these other guys around here. Cause this is my beach, brother. This is North Beach, Hogan territory, man. Sacred ground, brother. I never beat anybody up out there on the beach, but I could, I'm just teasing. What does a week of training look like for you? Well, starting on a Monday, I'll do chest and back. Tuesday, I'll do shoulders, a lot of cardio, ab work. Wednesday, I do buys and tries arms. Thursday, I'll do legs, of course. And then I may take a day off, or I may not. What's your favorite machine? Yeah, this is the Crippler. This is my main machine for running people off. And usually, the guys, the wrestlers, or my friends would go out and puke out of one of those doors. And one time, the big show didn't want me to catch him puking, so I heard him in my bathroom puking. So I put $5 and I put a sticker up there to see the incredible puking giant. But this is the, this is the machine. He's my boy, I'm just teasing, but that did happen. So anyway, this is, the, this is a Strive piece of equipment to train around injuries. Workouts have different intensities and different lengths 
and different, there's different strategies to get the muscles to grow or to maintain size, especially when you're 69 years old. Almost 70, brother. See how you feel when you get to be 70, brother. Have you always had a home gym? The gym has been scaled down quite a bit since I was the world's champion in the 80s and 90s. Before, it used to be probably three or four times as big. And it's training smart and training hard. And as you get older, when you get to be about 69 or 70 years old, you realize this becomes also a religion. Has wrestling taken a toll on your body? Wrestling has taken its toll. I wrestled almost 40 years off and on, and I probably should have quit at the 20 year mark. But uh, with the Hulkamania running wild all those years, and then when I turned into a bad guy and I became Hollywood Hulk Hogan, it was like jumping on another lightning bolt. And I had no idea that we were gonna reinvent the wrestling business, so I got hooked, I got sucked in, and I just rode that thing till it dropped. So. Wrestling's been really tough on my body with multiple surgeries and multiple injuries. Nobody gave me the memo that this stuff was fake. Wow. What's the worst injury you've received? Um, probably the worst injury I had in the ring was at WrestleMania 3. Everybody says Hulk Hogan slammed the 500 pound giant. Well, Andre was having some back issues and he would either go between 500 and about 650. And when I got under him to slam him and scoop him, once I picked him up here, as you can see, I never had my biceps fixed. I tore both of my biceps. And this part of my back is solid, but this part is all torn away. But that was the worst injury, to tear both biceps and my back in one shot. And uh, the weird part was I had to keep wrestling after that. I couldn't go get things fixed and be in, have a sling on both arms and my back fixed and take nine months off. I had to keep going every night. So that, that injury was a tough one. What's the best advice you've received? To be consistent. That's the best piece of information I've ever learned. And back in the day, you know, when Arnold said milk is for babies, you know, which I agree, um, Arnold says something really, really important that I picked up on one time. He said, even if you don't feel good, even if you don't feel like training, still go to the gym anyway, pick some lighter weights up. You'll get motivated and before you know it, you'll be in your rhythm and you'll get a good workout and even if you use lighter weights. So that's the main piece of advice I got and it was from Arnold and his wisdom was to be consistent and do not miss workouts. How do you keep your mind fit? Mental health? Well, it's a constant struggle because I'm legitimately crazy. That's what they say, aren't all wrestlers crazy? But um, I'm just very grateful, you know, for everything. I'm so grateful for this beautiful life. I'm just so grateful, you know, for my friends and my family, my kids being healthy. I'm grateful for finding a companion that loves the Lord like I do, my Lord and Savior. I'm just so grateful to be alive, you know. So it's looking forward, you know, in the windshield instead of worrying about what's in the rearview mirror now. And um, that's the only thing that keeps me sane because if I digress, and I start worrying about, oh my gosh, this happened, that happened, or this person's gone, or that person's gone, you know. Things happen for a reason, and my God takes people out of your life for a reason. So for me, to stay focused and dialed in, I stay in the moment. And that seems to work well. You've had an intense journey to recovery. It can mess with you, especially, you know, when you, when you come out of surgery number six, and they tell you you're never going to walk again. And so you kind of like are in one chair for a couple of years. And then you meet a doctor that says, I can get you back on your feet, but we need to perform extra surgeries, which from six to 10 was mind blowing. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been mentally um, a check and balance system of highs and lows, but to get on through the other side and to have faith and to, to believe, it's, uh, it was a test of faith, so I'm good. All right, Hulk, it's time for rapid fire questions. Workout, 7 a.m. or 7 p.m.? 7 a.m. Squat or deadlift? Squat. Favorite song on the workout playlist? Living on the edge. CrossFit, yay or nay? No. Dumbbells or kettlebells? Dumbbells. Pull-ups or chin-ups? Pull-ups. Run on a treadmill or in the great outdoors? Great outdoors. Cardio or weights? Weights. Big legs or big arms? Big paychecks. Biggest compliment, jacked, ripped, cut, or swole? Jacked. If you could wrestle any historic figure, who would it be? It would be Bill Clinton. If you could work out with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be? Muhammad Ali. 
okay, guys, enough's enough. You know, I spent hours and hours here. If I would have had free time, I could have been making millions of dollars with all the time I've wasted with you guys. You know, if you don't leave, brother, I'm going to stick the dragon, the dragon power on you. So what you going to do when Hulk Hogan throws you and your camera crew out on the street? What you going to do, brother? Ah!